Hello, Darren. Hi, Darren. Could you, you give right? me a num- mm-hmm. Could you give me a number between one and one hundred and eleven, please? One hundred and eleven. Thinking of the, the American plane, the F one eleven. Uh, it's got to be sixty nine, hasn't it? Okay. Sixty nine, dude. This is in my uh, Blue Diesels book that I got for Christmas of my friend Dan and Sue's. And you'll be pleased to know it's alive. Blue Diesels. Uh, What is it called? It's called Blue Diesels in View. Wow. (laughs) You've got quite a dynamic angle to your camera there today. Yeah, I thought I might try something different because um, I noticed when it's top down, maybe my hand covers up a lot of what I'm drawing. So. Oh, I have to see those things as well, but it's taken me long enough just to get this little tripod going. So yeah. I just thought people might want to see a bit more of how I make this uh, ridiculous uh, mess. Well, let's see how it goes. Let's see, if it, let's see if the new camera angle boosts the views. And if it does, yeah. I, I, I'll do the same. Um, I've got a little uh, reward this is a bit of at, the end of this, at the end of this drawing. <laughs> got a little uh, Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm drawing a, an ambassador. Ah, <laughs> um, goodness! This might be the longest I've gone before actually making a mark. <laughs> I'll have this finished before you start. Oh, there you well, go. I just feel a bit of I just feel a bit of planning is needed for this one. Um, yeah, I'm in the mood for a quick drawing session tonight, so I might do a, a, more than one in this. Or maybe we could, uh, if we do more than one, we could stop and make it two videos, but I'll just carry on mine, because I think right, mine's going to yeah. take a while. So was it in the last video where I was drawing the uh, the dilapidated uh, Christmas decorations at Crystal Palace Park? That was, um, as we recording, that was last week's time. Like, was, no, it's was West, wasn't it? Was it time? No. The, the last one I did, wasn't it? Yeah, it was time. West is, this is letting, letting people in on the mechanics of all this. West is out as we speak now tomorrow, but time, which was the one with the um, park, was yes, that was last week. Uh, um, well, an update to that: I um, ah. I got contacted by the BBC and ITV the next day. <laughs> Did you um? Did they want to use your photos? They did, but then BBC Radio, on top of the BBC website, uh, got a hold of me, right? And they wanted to talk to me, and um, to be honest, I was thinking, you know, defund the BBC. Fuck's sake! I mean. I'm just a bloke on Twitter who took some photos of some Christmas decorations. <laughs> Is that really good enough? And all of you, it's on the orange line. You know, it would take you half an hour to get here. Send a photographer out and get your own pictures. Right. Wow. Lazy tossers. <laughs> I was disgusted with a lot of them. Oh, you didn't speak to anybody. It's, it's not news, it's a tweet. <laughs> well, it's, I, I looked into that, actually. Um, what, the phenomenon and, um, of Lightopia? It's Topia and everything. Well, the, the news about Lightopia, and it wasn't mm. just uh, Crystal Palace. It's Alt- is it Alton Towers? I think it was there, and it also happened at Heaton Park in Manchester. Right. Um, made me chuckle because you mentioned um, the wireless festival at Crystal Palace and people pooing in uh, residence gardens and stuff. 
Oh, that well, also happens that, um, when Heaton Park has music festivals. It makes you wonder, so I suppose maybe the parks have got the same agent or something. I mean, I'm not joking. I'm not saying that as a joke. I think, I think like, you know, you have things like location managers and stuff. And like, I wonder whether there's someone working for both those parks' interests. Maybe. And maybe. getting the same dodgy bookings from <laughs> wireless yeah. and light. Yeah. yeah, could be. It's just that assumption that, like, I deleted the tweet, by the way, the next morning. Yeah. As as I just have it, it's, you know. I, 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 I'd rather this, 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 this be the sole property of a uh, with tuxedo <laughs> and tube. <laughs> but it's like that, that idea that like you'll get a credit. Oh, yeah, really? yeah. I'll put your name oh, on. Re- oh, wow. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, let me think about that. Oh, a credit. Like my name next to the photos on the ITV website. Well, then people really are five, aren't they? I uh, I used to work for my friend. I used to work for my friend Matthew in a shop called the Duke of Uke. Yeah, used to sell ukuleles in there. Um, sold ukuleles to uh, bedders from Madness and uh, Matt Be- the comedian Matt Berry amongst yeah. others <laughs> can I have a ukulele please young man yeah, said, like that. <laughs> I don't think he was that famous at the time because right. I, did, I, did, I did nonetheless know who he was um, and I was in there one day and Matthew, my friend, the owner of the shop, rang me up and went, oh shit, I forgot to tell you. Uh, Channel 4 are coming in. Right. So, okay. So yes, they've got permission and everything. They presume, I don't know if they paid him or whatever, but it's all right. I was like, okay, what do I have to do? He said, well, nothing really. They just need to film in the shop and when they come, you need to close the shop up. So I'm like, yeah. fine, this seems like an easy day. So they come, there's about, I don't know, four of them, some bags of equipment, cameras, right. and this director woman. And uh, what they were doing were, they were filming like eye dents for the culture. Right, yeah, yeah. And they were uh, asking people what culture meant to them. Yeah. What does culture mean to you? Col- I think culture is. Uh, and you get loads of them, loads of people making proper fucking dicks of themselves, edit it together, and then you got some TV, haven't you? Yeah. And so she said, uh, okay, so what we're going to do is the camera's going to film you from here, and we're going to ask you what culture is. And I thought, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Me? Sorry, Matt said you were coming into film. I didn't know you were filming me. And this is the point at which I'm, you know, I'm talking about the credit thing and just talking about, you know, what these things mean to people. She just went, she just looked at me quizzically and just went, but it's, it's going to be on TV. <laughs> As if like, it hadn't occurred to her that someone wouldn't want to be on TV. Cause presumably, say, yeah, that, that's exactly why you're objecting to it. <laughs> but, but also I suppose because I don't know, she works in TV. She presumably thinks TV's really great and that everyone else thinks TV's great. And so why wouldn't people want to be on TV? <laughs> Maybe that's what she thinks. <laughs> There are like, some people. Go on, go on. And I was like, no, 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 I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't th- I, don't, I don't know if I said any of these actual words, but the, the conversation went in this direction. So I said, no, I don't think so. And she's like, oh, well, we've got all the cameras here and everything. And, and so below the Duke of Uke was a, a recording studio. 
Yeah. My friend Simon ran it. I went, look, there's a recording studio downstairs. There's, there's probably a band in or something. Do you want me to go down and see if one of them want to do it? She goes, oh, yeah, would you? <laughs> so I went down. I do actually remember which band it was, but I'll leave that out of this uh, story. Oh. Um, go on, carry on. And I went downstairs and I went, look, some pricks upstairs on <laughs> Channel 4. <laughs> they want to film anyone just saying what they think culture is. And I honestly thought they'd go, yeah, sorry, we're busy making a record. We've got better things to do. But the whole band were like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, I'll do it. Like clambering up the stairs. So she was obviously right. <laughs> it was enough that it was just TV. And there's a... Not for me. I wouldn't have done it. Chapter 47 in Why Darren Doesn't Sell Any Records. Except you know that's not true, isn't it? It's not like this. They said you'll get some sales out of it if you go on. Yeah, like everyone will see it and go, "Oh, that's Darren Heaven. He's got a new album out. Someone's go and buy it." Well, I mean, I mean, I suppose you know, if I was gonna sort of talk to ITV about the Christmas decorations taking a long time to come down in my local park, you know, maybe from some pers- perspective, there is a sort of Oh, did you see that that Burke from Hefner on 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 on, <laughs> on TV the other day? You know, there is a sort of certain okay, it, it, you know, it is all publicity, good publicity type thing, right? So maybe you could say there might have been some small advantage in doing something like that, or at least you'd have a story to tell, and then you could tell it on Twitter, and you know, some of this might reflect on some sort of po- increased popularity for you. But that isn't true from the normal, the, you know, like, like at least I have something in media to promote. But the person who just takes a picture of the Christmas decorations, who's just minding their own business, and then they say, oh, you know, can we use your picture in Evening Sound or whatever? We'll give you a credit. Like for yeah. those people, there's, there's nothing. Like, I don't understand what the gain is. Like, what do you mean? A credit for what? Like a, a credit for Sainsbury's. I mean, like, I mean, it is weird, isn't it? I, I assume it stems from when people who took photographs were all professional photographers. Certainly, the sort of photographs you'd get in a in a, a news item. And then it was like, look, we no money for it, but we'll give you credit, and you may get some more business out of that. But no one's gonna go on a news website now and say, oh, that's a really good iPhone shot. I'll, I'll ask that dog walker well, if he wants some more work. Well, that's the, th- that's the thing as well that I was surprised about this. I was like, R- really, are these pictures good enough? I wasn't <laughs> no, even yeah. trying to be particularly arty. I was just, I just <laughs> thought it was something to, to, sh- to show you and my, and my mates on Twitter. Well, the thing is, Darren, that I don't think there is um, – are good enough anymore when it comes to things like that. They just want content. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not, it's hardly an honorary Cartier Bresson, is it? But they're not bothered. Yeah. Lazy and journalism. There's anyway. a guy, oh, speaking of lazy journalists, there's, um, there's a guy who works for the Bolton News. I'm going to name him because I do on Twitter all the time. He's called Robert Kelly. I like to call him Bob. And he'll he'll post a photo of um, Bolton in yesteryear. This this will be an article. Bolton News will link to it. So you got to click on Bolton News' link, and it takes to an actual page on Bolton News' website. And it's an old photo of Bolton, and it's literally a one-sentence article. It's two if you count the second sentence, but the first sentence basically always just says, do you know where this photo was taken? And then the second sentence, which is the same in every article, let us know at Bolton News. And and that is it. <laughs> and, and I'm always like, see Bob's knocking it out of the park again today, putting a proper shift in. And it's it's entirely for the clicks. Because the, these local papers just generate income through their websites now because hardly anyone buys the print editions. 
because they shit. And obviously one of the reasons they shit these days is because no one buys print editions. And so it's a it's a vicious circle. Fewer sales yeah. get the poorer the journalists, and the poorer the journalists, the fewer sales. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's the laziest of lazy journalists. I, I love it. He's stealing living. I don't know if he does any other articles, but them. And he may do other articles for other local papers because, you know, they're all, loads of them are owned by NewsQuest. Um, so it'd be I like, do you sure. recognize this picture of Preston? Let me know. Let Bob Kelly know. What is this fruit? <laughs> is this the Queen? Well, it happens in. It also happens in the domain where we're doing this, right? In uh, in YouTube, yeah, because like yeah. YouTubers now always end their video saying, "Well, what do you think?" Normally, after a list, right? Right. List. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so then your next video best, is best James Bond viewers top ten. But you, maybe you disagree with us. Let us know. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah. They don't want your opinion. <laughs> they do though, because they'll do a follow up video where they might do a, a top ten list of viewers' favorite Bond films. Are you sure? You get that right. with some board game. Board game top tens. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe they're a higher yeah. caliber. Gen generating, get viewers to generate your own content. Speaking of which, if anyone's watching, tell us what to draw next video. Um, uh, well, we have. To, well, 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 well actually, see if you've we, done it. Well, no, no, no. Actually, I mean, this is. Yeah, no, we are guilty of this because we, we, if we're honest, we definitely have talked about this, haven't we? We have talked about this idea that that, that, yeah. that you know. The difference is I'm not BBC News. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I like that you, you know, we pay a license. I love the license. I'm, I, I, I love BBC. Happy to pay a license. But sometimes you, you must be tempted to say, well, I'm paying you. Ge ge generate some content for me. Like the Queen or the King now. Well, the thing with the uh, Evening Standard guy, sort of using the photo anyway. I mean, that whole episode was worth it just because I managed to stay to an evening standard journalist, stay classy. So the whole, the whole episode was worth it for that. Did they use that? Did you use the photo then without permission? Yeah, yeah, he asked permission and it went up. And his name was Josh, obviously. Oh. And so then I just went, <laughs> all right, Josh, can you use it anyway? Stay classy. And then he went, I'm really wow. sorry, that wasn't supposed to happen. I'll take it down. I didn't even look to see if it was taken down. Could still be up there for yeah, a Maybe he did. Maybe he did. I, I mean, I believe it was a mistake, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, look at that. I mean, I suppose you can, in a way, till they're trains, but there's a long way to go here. There is a long way to go, isn't there? <laughs> it's, th it's at that stage, you, you, I, you must get it, I do, where you, you, you get a certain, uh, into, certain way into the painting and often not very far, and you think, is this going to, am I going to be able to do this? Well, as you said, as you said, Becky, uh, Becky said about one of my paintings, when watching one of these videos, when does it get good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it doesn't always, does it? I mean, it, it just doesn't always. I suppose it doesn't always. No. The, whole, the whole thing is a leap of faith, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, So I've got some good news um, related to our, 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 our drawing and stuff. All right. And uh, see, can I just show you something I'm trying to, to, to do here in this picture? 
Yeah. So, more and more, as you know, I'm trying to paint light more and more, yeah. not these lines. But the thing is, is you go from the lightest to the darkest. But really, yeah. what you should do to successfully paint white is leave it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's really you hard with, with, with white details in landscape. And often what you've seen and, and regular viewers will have seen me use a white gel pen. Uh, yeah. Here. Yeah. To, yeah. Um, to, to do those details in. But if you look at this front train, I'm actually this time attempting to leave in a post. Yeah. I wondered what that was. Yeah. Yeah, um, we shall see whether that works. But it's a really strange thing to be doing because it means I'm trying to draw a paint a straight line by the absence of yep. color. Yeah, yep. So, what was your good news? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Do you remember? Right. And I think it did happen on one of these videos. Do you remember? I was getting excited in the summer uh, about a uh, painting exhibition, an exhibition in a sort of proper gallery, a local one. Yeah, yeah. And a you were one, you were worried yeah. that it had all gone quiet and nothing's happening. Yeah, well, I, I think that worry hadn't happened on the videos here. I think I was smart right. enough not to sort of talk about that, anx that anxiety here. But oh, I, was, I was, oh shit, that white was supposed to go down there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Gel pen. I suppose so. I mean, it might even be a dab of acrylic. I don't, I don't think I can really. Yeah. Get... Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, they got in contact today. So are you still interested in the thing? So it just goes to show. I mean, I was really was starting to think this is, uh, I, I fucked this up. I, you know, to be honest, I was thinking my plan was to have stopped being deep in painting ideas for this exhibition yeah. by now. And uh, so now the problem is, oh shit, I've <laughs> got to do it. <laughs> it's know, a good really, problem to have. It's a good problem to have. So that, and also a, uh, an exhibition in Barcelona. Yeah. So I have two exhibitions this year. I mean, the thought occurs to me that they could be the same exhibition. Yeah. I mean, I could do a set of work for both of them. The only problem would be is if I sold loads of paintings. And yeah, once again, a good problem to have. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You got to got to do a whole new batch. Yeah, I mean, I sort of don't think so. Actually, I don't think it's really in mine or your style. I think if I have two exhibitions, I'll uh, I'll try and do uh, two sets of work. This is a killer, this what I'm painting. I actually don't know if it's possible. <laughs> um, of course it's possible. Of course it's possible, yeah. Hmm. I watched a Western today. Do you like Westerns? Uh, yeah, I like Westerns. Tell you what, I, I like spaghetti westerns in okay. particular. Um, that's my love of them, L and B movies. I watched The Grand Silence, which was really, really good. Um, and it's, 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 uh, it was one of the first westerns to have um, a snowy landscape as the setting. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. That sounds good. Really good. It's really good. And it looks freezing. It was filmed in the Dolomites in northern Italy. And uh, it's full on snow, really heavy snow. Um, you know, like it's, the, there was probably some fake snow used, but not much. It looked like it was filmed in the depths of winter. And um, really good film. And the baddie, 
He's uh, played by Klaus Kinski. Oh, okay. Um, he was in a lot in the early part of his career. Was in a lot of spaghetti westerns. Um, you know, a big part. Um, I'm trying to say, made easy for him to be in them by the fact that none of these films were um, released in the original language, so you didn't have to speak Italian to be in an Italian film. Yeah, they, they were all intended to be dubbed. Um, but he's an absolute bastard in the film. I thought that's great. I'm going to draw him tonight. Googled him, looking for some good photos of him, but yeah. um, unfortunately, they revealed a rather dark side. <laughs> just instantly. oh, you found you found a dark side to the person online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the uh, just a lot of the images were linked to news stories about him. After uh, he died, and uh, quite horrendous. I'm not going to say anymore, but um, yeah, put me off. So I was going to be drawing really characterful actors first, but reluctant to do that. Which is why I'm drawing the the British ambassador. <laughs> the British ambassador in this film, or you're just painting the current British ambassador to Italy? He's he's a British ambassador. Uh, I think he was an ambassador to America. I vaguely recognise him. I just thought because I got me Ferrero Rocher. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I thought the I thought the Ferrero Rocher might have come after the idea. If you see what I mean? No, yeah, the Ferrero yeah. Rocher sparks yeah. the idea. I was going to eat it before we started filming, and, uh, and then I thought of it as a little prop, like Phil Collins with his paintbrushes. You know that story, don't you? Uh, it's because his uh, missus ran off with the decorator. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so he performed uh, against our lads and soft the pops with a pot of paintbrushes on his piano. Also. And a, and a nasty little dig. Also. How bad can Phil Collins be? That your wife runs off with the decorator. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> your multi-million selling artist, you know. Yeah. You yeah. travel the world. You're doing the theme tune to the Lion King or whatever. <laughs> that was Elton. <laughs> and then for your wife, no, it's not enough, is it? It's not enough. Well, ladies love a man who can do a bit of DIY. Or just maybe he was nice. Yes, I think that's probably more likely, isn't it? <laughs> Decorated to the stars, so he probably gets paired well too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. that. There's no way he's like, you know, someone you've got on you know, trust a trade or whatever it is. No. Literally don't know where to turn to next on this piece of paper. There's just so many things I've got to paint. A lot, a lot going I on. I think I could be here for a while. I thought you were a real challenge there, didn't I? That's okay, though. Just by picking a number. I think we should do something where the viewers tell us what to paint. There's only five of them. We could probably do a painting each. Yeah, I think so. Quite frightening though. I'd, I'd, I'd be worried they might give us some, <sighs> some Gmail paint it style request that gets. Oh yeah, they will, to... won't they? Yeah. Did you see the yeah. god awful list when I asked everyone for band names? Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, they can't be <laughs> trusted. Can they, the public? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but okay, yeah, I mean, you could do something like, you know, if you win this competition, you can uh, tell me what train I'll paint or something like that, you know. Still not done a competition, have we? No, I, we, I think we worked out a way of doing it. And I, I can't, I think I've forgotten what we decided on. It's I think getting it's getting a bit awkward, awkward, I think. Have you ever entered a competition? Oh, I must have done. I won um, a Pierre Cardin pen and a t shirt um, from Channel 4's. Uh, Teletext pages <laughs> back in the eighties. They had um like the kids section, and you had to um there was a story being told, and you could submit the next chapter okay. the story. They had this interesting as well. This was a weekly, a weekly story, so I had to write the story. How old it happened? Um. I'm guessing like 10, maybe 11. 10. I'm going to say 10. Um, yeah, so I wrote a story, posted it off. They went through all the entries, picked mine all in, all in a week. It seems quite efficient. Um and all the only thing I remember is that I introduced a new character into the story called Wayne, and Wayne was my best friend at school. But yeah, I won um I won a light blue t shirt, still see it, and a Pierre Cardin pen with the um Channel Force Teletext logo printed on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what have I won? Well, I mean, we can't talk about my award again, can we? Because I, I mean, no, because it has to be a competition. Such. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't um, enter yourself for Britain's uh, hardest working musician, did you? Imagine that it? you have to enter it. <laughs> well, I think you do actually. I think someone really? else entered me. Ah, uh, right, but you didn't yourself, though, did you? No, no, no. Um, I think Pete Perfides entered me. Right. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I, think he, I think he had. I think he had by sniggers here. <laughs> I, think, I think he had something to do with it anyway. I was entered by Pete for, for feeding. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I was... <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I was with uh, Pete. You know, we have these sort of very uh, definite memories of the last things before lockdown. Now, don't we? Yeah. And uh, two of the last things I did were events for the launch of Pete's book, and I uh, I went up to uh, Manchester with him. And I remember being in a car talking about this, you know, newfangled COVID thing. Wow, yeah. It'll never catch on. Well, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. That's what yeah. we were saying, you know, or fuss and nonsense about nothing. It's, you know, I think, I think, I think people are getting a bit too excited. They <laughs> possibly weren't getting excited enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The problem is, is it, right, here's yeah. the trains, right? There is just so much detritus around them. Yeah. You know, there's so much. They're in a yard. There's like, I mean, I'm just, anywhere I look, they'll see something like here. There's some rusted metal. Now, I know that when we're drawing these things, we don't have to put in everything. It's about what you don't put. But you can't put yes. in nothing. No, you can't. Um, this gap is completely wrong. This is you, absolutely um, right over here. I mean, yeah. I assume you're just going to put noise in, in the 
around it, aren't you? Okay. Well, I think, right. this, I think, this, I think, I, I think, I think now we've, now we've got something to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> because yeah, you can put noise in. I think that's, that's, a, that, this is a really interesting conversation in, in terms of what I paint and it might apply to you as well. Yes, you can put, put mm. uh, noise in. Look at, um, where, like I've painted these tracks now. Yeah. Now, you know, I cannot claim to have observed every plank. No. Every sleeper that goes across this thing. Partly, sometimes I'm going into it and I'm going into automatic and I'm painting a pattern. And some of the noise is like that. What do they call it? They call it on spaceships in uh, science fiction, they call it greebling, don't they? That's right. Yeah. We actually, this got mentioned in this the, got mentioned the other day, board. didn't it? Yeah. So here I am doing some greebling here. But if I think, and I might be wrong, but I think if I make it up, if I just go, ah, oh, there's some boxes here, whatever, it will look wrong. Yeah. And so there's kind of like an intensity with, with how you observe and draw things. So for instance, yeah. You know, I might not do any of this detritus around these trains in the same sort of details that I will do the trains. But if I sort of just give up and do marks, I think the viewer can tell. It just yes, looks I not agree. convincing. Yeah. So I sort of do have to observe the, the detritus and, and, and render it in some way. But yeah, I guess you've, got to, you you've got to put the right kind of noise in haven't you yeah and i guess what you're doing is you're sort of potentially trying to direct the uh the viewer in a direction see for instance yeah. this thing i'm doing here this black smudge here looks yeah. i can't be sure actually i don't think it is i was gonna say it's tires but i don't think it is tires because trains don't have tires i think it's like no. coils black coils of something wiring or cabling and so i have to do something that sort of reflects it this is this is going to be a, a classic painting where whatever you do darren I'm, and I'm saying this to myself not you darren yeah, yeah. you don't work out the hourly rate on this one <laughs> It's one of those paintings where you put it online, you go, right, 500 quid. And people go, it's just a blurry picture. Yeah, but it took me ages. <laughs> well, I've done my first drawing. <laughs> I feel like uh, doing a second one. Yeah, do a second one. I, mean, I, 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 want, I, want, I, I think I think it could be good for the title of the video to see. See Darren. Do ten drawings in the space of <laughs> take Darren to do one. I feel like my next one should still say I'm the British ambassador, but it should say um, "Look at my rear." But do you know this? Who that <laughs> British ambassador is? No, no. <laughs> I just I just googled British ambassador and he came up. I still think you should give him a name. He was um. Well, I'm gonna check it out. Because I, like I like the idea that this guy might be alive yeah. and might one day just type his name into Google. Right. Hey, yeah, Ma yeah. hey up, Maureen. Some, <laughs> some fella is painted me. <laughs> My mum's called Maureen. That's, that's as well maybe, but it's not the subject. <laughs> yeah. British Ambassador Kim Darroch. There we go. He called uh, President Trump's uh, team inept and dysfunctional. So oh, it's all right. He's not that bad then, is he? Although that's a pretty low bar if we're saying, you know, to get in our good books. <laughs> <laughs> you have to observe that President <laughs> Trump was a moron. <laughs> right, so... Maybe I'll just draw someone else saying, look at my rear. It's making me chuckle, that phrase. Now, I think I feel like I need to, I need to do it. Is this it. a joke? Is this a pun on rear admiral? 
No, it's because in this one, I drew his ear wrong. All right. So I decided, as I do often, if I make a mistake, I'll draw attention to it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah you, have to, you have to forgive me. I am concentrating quite hard on that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Bastard load of trains here. So by, I'm drawing attention to it by saying, I'm the British ambassador, look at my ear. Okay, I've and got it. And the minute I wrote that, I could, all I could hear in my head was, look at my rear. Okay. Which, you know, I think people have seen enough videos to know I have a fairly puerile sense of humour sometimes. Um, just the phrase, phrases make me chuckle, look at my rear. <laughs> Why is it funny? Just is. I don't know, but it's a real gift to it. It's a real, it's a real life advantage to be able to make yourself laugh like that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, go too far and you get locked up, but yeah. Get him. Is that still in? Would you look at this page? It's just a load of splodges. It is. It is. The details should bring it all together. Again, well, I sort, of I sort of want to get into the trains because I think, you know, whether I can pull those trains off is what will make it work. But I feel like it, I'll just be so depressed if I get those trains good and then I just have several hours of, 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 of putting all this noise in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I want to get some more of this done. The last two... Uh, ones i've done like this have sold though the uh the the That's train good. ones i've done here yeah yeah i mean doesn't surprise me i you know me, <laughs> i don't want to say men but we know it's men men like yep. trains yep i like trains yeah. i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not saying that as if i'm above it if I was going to buy one of my paintings, I'd probably buy some of the trains. <laughs> <laughs> Just poured myself some uh, Lyra low alcohol uh, beer. Right. Uh, no alcohol beer. Well, I mean, it's all sort of 0. 0.5 or something, isn't it? Yeah, this is yeah. 0. 0.5. Is it good? Oh, you know. Let's give them a shout out, shall we? Yeah. Uh, Athletic Brewing Athletic. Company, Upside Down. Upside Dawn, sorry, Golden. Yeah. Beer. I mean, sure. I mean, you know, it's an admirable thing to have. We need to have it. It does kind of, it does kind of fill a certain hole in the evening. You know, you've, right. You can't have any more tea or coffee. You've had your, your dinner you know you're doing a you're doing your youtube channel you know how it is yeah 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 and, and, so, down. and so like i would i would have quite liked to be in now and so instead of being i'm having this no no i can i can always taste the absence of alcohol i always yeah. always can the only time i thought one was you know was capable of fooling me was when I had one on tap. So when you see right. Big Drop or one of those uh, low alcohol beers in right. a pub and then it's fizzy and it has that kegginess to it, you know, that castness or keg, I don't know what I'm saying, cask, I suppose they are, aren't they? Not keg. Um, then I think, oh, yeah, okay. That feels like I'm... That that feels to me like I'm drinking a pint. I, I, mm. I was, and I did that quite early on in dry January last year. Um, and I think that works. I'm not doing dry January this year. I've probably perhaps already said what I'm doing in a, another video, but what I'm doing this year is I'm attempting to, uh, have five dry, uh, sorry, 10 dry months, uh, 10, shit, 10 dry <laughs> days every month. <laughs> it's like you, you need a drink. Yeah, 10 dry days every month. So the, the, the end result of this should be by the end of the year that I have been dry for a third of the year. Yeah. And 
uh, as we're speaking on the 24th of January, uh, this is my 10th day. So wow. I've done it. But of course, that presents me with a sort of strange decision because, you know, it feels stupid to just constantly, you know, it seems almost childish or puerile to, to now decide to just drink because I can. Yeah. So I think the, hopefully the upshot might be that I do more. Or I'm wondering whether if I do more this month, I can trade them into next month, maybe. <laughs> like um, carbon offset. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I suppose, I suppose it isn't really in the spirit of things to already be looking ways round it. Uh, you could, could you offer to do someone else's dry January. <laughs> I had beer on Saturday night. I don't yes, know. You, are, you, are also, you are also you are also uh drinking a lot less, aren't you? Yeah. Um I had a Belgian beer, so I was thinking, all right, if this is uh this is gonna be good. I was kind of disappointed. I was expecting a big test sensation because I've not had a Belgian beer since before Christmas. Uh hardly had any beer since Christmas. And um, it didn't grab me. I was kind of disappointed that I didn't like it more. Well, that's good, isn't it, I suppose? I mean, it, it is good, isn't beer. it? I mean, that good. Beer just, the beer just might not have been that great, right? Well, I've had it before, and I liked it. Okay. I'm just wondering if, um, because I basically, you know, I basically stopped. It's not even, I, I kind of cut down. If I'm saying that like, I'm, I'm not buying multiple bottles or cans to bring home anymore. I'm not drinking wine unless I'm in company. Uh, that basically means I've hardly drunk since Christmas. I drunk on Christmas Day. I had plenty on Christmas Day because um, I definitely didn't um, just say, that's it, I'm never drinking again. Um, but um, I have kind of, you know, virtually stopped. So it's not really bothered me that much. And um, being part-time worker, it has been quite handy on um, my bank account. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to making it a tree. You know, I'm looking forward to, uh, yeah. Next time I go to my local, uh, tap room or whatever, I'm looking forward to, okay, I'm going to buy this, uh, expensive can now. Cause you know, I've saved quite a bit. I'll be interested to see if I go out with some friends, um, if I have a drink or not. I don't know what I would do yet. Because I do like, well, I like getting drunk with friends. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I mean, I do feel we're in a sort of a slightly public space here, and I do think, you know, yeah. we might be talking to people that have um, given up successfully for. And I, I, as I get older, I have got friends that are completely sober. It's not such yeah. a weird thing now to go to the pub. Uh, my friend was round yesterday, yesterday who has uh, given up drinking completely. And so I don't want to sound at all, you know, unhelpful. No, no. Because no. I know it's, just, and I'm not saying you do either. And, I'm, and I know it's, no, just, not it's a all, problem. No. But at the same time, as you say, I, you know, I fucking love it, you know, 
it's it's, I, it's well, I'm I'm reluctant to to saying like I don't want to be the person who says I stopped drinking and it's brilliant and you should stop too. I don't want to, you know, I really don't want to be that person. No, and 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 um, actually, my friend who came around yesterday is in no way that, and I think that's one of perhaps the hardest things you have to do when you, uh, because I think in a way, actually, you know, I don't like drinking as much as I like pubs. Yeah, yeah, and I like the environment of a pub and I like all of the brilliant times I've had in yeah. pubs. Um, I think that's a lot to do with it. I think if I, agree. I, it, I mean, I think it, obviously it's got something to do with my job as well. You yeah. know, I, I do work in the leisure industry <laughs> You know, I'm always spending time in pubs. Um, yeah. Making an album with my uh, friend that came around yesterday. Uh, it's a very old friend, but we've never really made music before. Even though we know each other few, through music, we know each other through being on the same record label yeah. uh, years ago. And he he really was one of the first people to ever notice what I was doing, actually. And uh, to see a connection between what I do and he does. And... Uh, yeah, last year it occurred to me, oh God, why haven't we made a record together then? Um, and we sort of, you know, we'd become reacquainted over the last couple of years. And we're really enjoying our company. So we're sort of trying to do, you know, possibly a sort of album of duets, like kind of, you know, and singing in harmony and stuff, you know, maybe right. I mean, it isn't, I mean, quite a few times the Everly brothers have been mentioned, not by anyone else hearing us, just by us to, a, to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, we've written some songs where, you know, we're both singing and, and we're kind of quite inclined to, well, should we should we go in this direction, and should we just really try hard to do this properly and sing, you know, very very well? Uh, it's it's lots of fun. It's um, I tell you what else about it is that I don't know. I mean, I suppose this would be an example of it as well. What we do. But in creativity, when you get older, when you sort of start to realise that genuinely some ego has disappeared. Yeah. Like, you're just, and I'm talking about, you know, both of us, like in yeah. this writing thing. And you just notice that you genuinely don't mind anymore. Oh, well, maybe you should sing this bit. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, who does this bit? Well, I think you should play guitar on this. And like, well, why don't you sing all of it? It sounds better if you sing it. And and just like, oh God, so this is what being an adult is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't care. <laughs> it's just fine. So was your friend in a in a you said he was on a label, was he in a band as well? Yeah, um, yeah. His name's Michael Sheehy, and he used to be in a band. He right. uh, used to be in a band called uh, Dream City Film Club. Right. And when I first uh, um, got to London, the thing about my songs—I mean, people listen. Some people listening will know this, but certainly my early songs. You know, they're all a bit dirty and grubby. 
you know, I was singing about, yeah. um, you know, sexuality, male sexuality, um, broken hearts in bed sits and all this sort of stuff. I mean, yeah. some of it lived, but also a lot of it not lived. A lot of it just me making shit up because I, you know, I wanted to be a, no, I just thought it would get attention. I was just, I was, I was trying to think like what, uh, what don't people write songs about? I suppose is what I was trying to do. Right. You know, what, what aren't people writing songs about and where can I fit in? Where is there a, a type of song I can do? And, um, and I sort of sent my, uh, cassettes to venues and I sent them to the Bull and Gate and uh, Alex and Lawrence who run the Bull and Gate back then who also ended up in Dream Seal Film Club like oh shit we should put him with that pervert Michael <laughs> and so when I first saw Michael I was like whoa steady on that's a bit saucy <laughs> and he saw me and was like oh wow fucking hell Dirty, you dirty, dirty boy. You dirty bastards. Yeah, so sort of consequently, I think, and I've certainly said this before, I think he's sort of, rather than me thinking, oh, someone else is doing it, I shouldn't do it, it more, it more validated me. It made me yeah. think, oh, okay, this guy's doing it, it must be allowed to do this. Yeah. I mean, the irony is, that you're definitely not allowed to do it <laughs> as time has gone on. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, I talk about this on stage. There are definitely lyrics and stuff, which I, I, you know, I wouldn't write now. And there are some songs that I don't want to sing now that I wrote there. Yeah. Um, so that's also interesting because, uh, you know, we've both matured and, um, you know, we're not sitting there. Let's write another song about sex. I mean, we've done all that, really. You know. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting thing to sort of reflect on. What 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 do we? You know, the the the, the obvious opportunity for us to write songs together would have been, you know, in the late nineties, and we never did. So now we're doing it now. So. I suppose I suppose we're sort of thinking about what what do those two characters who used to hang around North London what do they write about now they're in the fifties mm. and what do you write about? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Um, we've been talking quite a bit about what can it mean to have. Uh, two men singing together, you know, um, do you have to think about the meaning of the song that, that creates a situation where two men are singing about one thing right. or can you yeah. completely forget about that? Can it just be a love song and, you know, one person singing harmony and that's just the performance of the song. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be part of the meaning of the song. That there's two men singing it. Yeah. So certainly, you know, I, I, I've sort of been thinking about what that can be. And I've, I have said to him that I, I actually do. I do want to write a, uh, with him, uh, a, a girl is the girl is mine song. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do want to do a song where, where, you know, we are love rivals and, uh, or even turn it on its head. I mean, what about like, a? uh, you know, love rivals who both think the other person is better. Actually, that's it. I've had an idea. That's what it is. The girl is mine. The girl is yours. That's it. I might even call it that. The song is called <laughs> The Girl Is Yours. <laughs> she likes Scrabble, mate. I, 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 can't, I can't be doing Scrabble, Michael. <laughs> Take my wife. Oh, please, take her. <laughs> yeah, once again, that is getting back to where we were in the late 90s, but yeah, right. <laughs> um, 
Uh, what have we written about? Um, I mean, I also sort of, I, I also, you know, we, we are both open-minded and liberal enough so that, that I said, I don't see a problem with us actually singing a love song to yeah. each other. You know, there's no reason why that is also another possible thing that, uh, you know, two men might be in a situation singing to each other about. Uh, if you think of anything, tell me. If you think of a a scenario in a song where I think mm. the, the person going to someone for advice, I think we were talking about that yesterday. Right. Yeah. Like he had a song. I was thinking almost like a Dex's Midnight Runners type thing. Don't stand me down, you know. Yeah. What if I came in and said, Yeah, well, actually, I, you know, I don't think it's as bad as all that, Michael. <laughs> yeah. You think of the two, is it uh, two of us, which is a uh, sort of like it's not really, but it's kind of people like to think it's about Paul and John having a nice day out where they're not arguing all the time about band and stuff. So I think we know it's not, but we don't mind it being that as well. Like, yeah, it's impossible yeah. to see them sing it and not think that a little bit, isn't it? Even yeah. though. It definitely isn't. It definitely is Paul singing right. about Linda, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But there's no, you'd have to have a heart stone to see them singing it, not thinking. Especially as they, you know, I think isn't there a clip on the Get Back where they're sort of singing it into one mic? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Just starting to look a little bit like trains, aren't they? God, look how much yes, drawing yeah, yeah. you're doing whilst I'm doing nothing. <laughs> I've done, I've done two. <laughs> you know what I think you should do? What? Is I think you should go onto Amazon, order this book, wait for it to come, turn to page <laughs> 69, draw this, and I still won't be finished. <laughs> Right, another one, though. We'll yeah, another. please, please, please. I, 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 I want you to shame me into getting this picture done. Is this going to be an epic video? And oh, well, I mean, we thing. could. No, we could. We could just, we could just stop it and 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 just do a part one and part two. How long have we been well, going for anyway? Um, uh, getting on for an hour. Go on, stop it. Why don't we make this part one? Let's make this part one. Bye-bye, Darren. Never done this before. Bye, Darren. <laughs>